Hey, what's going on my friends? Patrick here back today with another video. And today I wanna share a few of my personal songwriting best practices and hopefully give you some new tools that you can implement into your own creative process. Now the creative process, especially songwriting is a bit of a mysterious one. Everyone's process is a little bit different and I'm certainly no authority on the matter. I have, however, been writing music for a lot of my life in a variety of different roles and formats. And while my artist producer project is still relatively new, my most recent single hit 100,000 Spotify streams in right around six months. I've narrowed down my list of songwriting best practices to the three that have personally helped me out the most. So let's dive into tip number one. Write daily. Now, this one seems a little simple and obvious, but I hope to unpack this a little bit in a way that will give you some practical things that you can implement into your creative process. Oh, and uh, before this comment section gets a little too carried away, little inside joke from the last video. Now, one of the books that really changed the way that I approached my craft as a songwriter and producer was Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. By this point, I'm sure you know this book well. This is a book that's less about writing per se and more about overcoming hurdles and resistance within your creative process. The first passage in the book, right after the forward, really impacted me the first time I read it. Pressfield essentially is giving the reader a glimpse into his day in the life. I'm not gonna take the time to read out this whole passage to you, but I'll put it up on the screen real quick and you can pause it if you wanna read the whole thing. Now it's the last little portion of this passage that really, really stands out to me. It says, how many pages have I produced? I don't care. Are they any good? I don't even think about it. All that matters is I've put in my time and hit it with all that I've got. All that counts is that for this day, for this session, I have overcome resistance. One of the key takeaways from the War of Art is that you learn that in order to be more inspired, overcome resistance, not deal with creative blocks, not deal with writer's block. You have to develop a daily ritual, a daily practice, a daily routine of investing in your craft. If you're songwriting, you have to write daily. Your songwriting process begins to become less about the result and becomes more about the practice. And I would say you have to get a few months into this process before you really start to see the benefit of it. And personally, the biggest benefit is I no longer sit down and worry about needing to produce my next greatest thing. I know that with enough repetition and with enough creative at bats, something good is gonna come. If you haven't gone through this book, I highly recommend it. It's super short. I do not like reading and I read this book every year. So I'll link it in the description below. Another book that I'm sure you've heard of that I love to recommend is Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. And The Artist Way is kind of a 12 week program to help you rediscover your creative self. But one of the things that I have kind of kept with me beyond my 12 week journey with The Artist Way is morning pages. Now, morning pages are exactly that. You get up in the morning and one of the first things that you do is you journal three pages. And this is just stream of consciousness writing. It's essentially you're writing three pages worth of whatever is in your head. As Julia Cameron describes it, we each have our logical brain and our artist brain. And what the morning pages are designed to do is kind of get that inner self-critic, that inner sensor, our logical brain. It's to kind of exhaust that, get everything that we're thinking about out onto the page so that it's expressed and now our artist brain is free to create and play. Surprisingly, it is a really, really valuable tool. If nothing else, developing a daily habit of journaling and expressing your ideas and getting them out of your head, I think is really valuable. Now, if morning pages are kind of the setup for the day, kind of getting you primed to express yourself creatively, I think it's really important to take that a step further and do something daily to express that creativity. And there's definitely gonna be some days where you don't wanna pick up your instrument or you don't wanna put pen to paper or you don't wanna work on a new track. But I think it's those days where it's almost more important to just do something small, maybe sit down with your guitar for 15 minutes and just remind yourself that this is who you are. Now, the last thing I wanna address in this write daily slash daily disciplines section of the video is that it's okay to be multifaceted and to feel like you can't address each one of these different practices that you have every single day. So a lot of us as modern day songwriters, we are lyricists, vocalists, instrumentalists, producers. That's a lot of different hats to wear. That's a lot of different talents that 
need nurturing and need development. It's okay to have a season where you are focused way more on one of those facets than the others. So if your daily discipline involves writing lyrics every day, great. If it involves working on your instrument and writing new chord progressions and writing new melodies, great. If it involves being in your DAW and working on your production techniques and making beats and creating musical landscapes for lyrics and vocal melodies to go on top of, great. I think the bigger picture is, no matter what facet of songwriting you're focused on in this particular season, just make a commitment to yourself to approach it every single day and to kind of move the needle of progress forward a little bit every day. Now my next tip is to pull from your influences. I can remember when I was first starting out, I was consuming so much material, documentaries, behind the scenes, making the album kind of content, trying to learn as much as I could about songwriting and production. The more I researched, the more I discovered that my heroes weren't always the ones who necessarily had the most training, but rather they were the artists who had just spent the most time working on their craft, studying the greats, and clearly identifying their influences. Now, that is not at all to say that training isn't super, super valuable. Training has definitely served me and given me a foundation with lots of tools to apply to my craft. More so, I just wanna emphasize the importance of studying your influences and really taking the time to learn from the artists who inspire you. We're all individually drawn to certain genres and styles and players and writers and producers. And those influences play a huge role in helping each of us craft our own unique sound. For example, when you listen to John Mayer's guitar playing and his writing, you can hear a wide variety of influences, ranging from Clapton and Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix to songwriters like Jeff Buckley and Nora Jones. All of these different influences played a role in helping John Mayer become the world-renowned artist that he is today. So when it comes to really pulling from your influences, the first thing I recommend is obviously do a lot of listening. Keep a relatively short playlist of reference tracks that you are studying and dissecting on a regular basis. If I'm collaborating with another artist on a song, one of the things that I've gotten in the habit of doing is just creating a short Spotify playlist that each of us can kind of dump inspirational songs and reference tracks into. It's a great way, especially when you're sitting down to work on your song or have a writing session, to just kind of prime that session with some listening beforehand. And that creative focus, if you will, can really aid the songwriting process. If you're struggling to find some new music to listen to, I definitely recommend listening to your influences' influences. The other thing that you're seeing too nowadays is artists will post their own personal listening playlist to their Spotify profile. For example, Tom Mish has a huge playlist filled with tons of his influences. The playlist has over a thousand songs in it, tons of people follow this playlist, and as a shameless plug. I also have a playlist on Spotify with artists that I'm listening to and studying, songs that I'm trying to replicate in my own productions. So I'll be sure to link up both of those playlists in the description below if you're interested. My next tip that I recommend is once you're doing a lot of listening, really take the time to learn those songs. Take your favorite song of the moment and learn how to play it on your instrument. Learn how to sing it. Memorize the lyrics. If you produce, try to recreate some different elements of the song in your DAW. It can be a little maddening trying to figure out some of these parts, trying to figure out how to play it exactly like they did, or figure out exactly how to recreate that sound, but it's in that process that you learn so much. Really try to take as much from your influences as you can. To once again quote John Mayer, it is the process of trying to sound like our heroes and failing that allows us to sound like ourselves. Don't share too much too soon. Now this is a really big one for me. I actually planned on doing an entire video on this topic alone because I think it is such a prevalent issue for artists today. Feedback from others can be a really valuable asset to the creative process, especially critical feedback. But I've found that sharing what you're working on before it's ready to be heard or commented on can really jeopardize that creative process. Let me explain. In today's world, I think it's really easy to grow accustomed to instant feedback for everything from your outfit choices to your thoughts on politics and world events to even your art. Likes and comments and messages in response to something that we've posted make us feel good. It makes us feel like we're doing good work and we're on the right track. Now, here's the problem. When you start to rely on that feedback and that instant validation, 
You're trying to take shortcuts with the creative process, and in my experience, you run the risk of stunting your growth as an artist. Think of it like this. When you share a creative idea, let's say it's like a little clip of a song that you're working on, when you share that on social media, you're gonna get one of two responses. You can get a positive response, What's wrong with that? Seems awesome, right? That scenario can be totally harmless. But I've also found in that scenario that instead of feeling like there's more work to do on the song, you can get really easily attached to the unfinished version of the song that received a lot of praise. And in my experience, it can just be kind of tough to sit down with that project and continue to work on it. The feedback and response and praise from families, friends, followers, fans, whatever the case may be, that's one of the best parts of finishing the marathon that is songwriting. Sharing something before it's complete is kind of like taking a shortcut to the finish line. Now, on the other hand, let's say you get a negative response or <laughs> what I've found to be even worse, no response. Let's be honest with ourselves. It is pretty much curtains after that. You are gonna have no desire to sit down and work on this song idea that earlier that day you thought was so fun and interesting and exciting. Trust me, your inner critic will kick in and try to convince you that your idea isn't any good because it didn't get the response that you were expecting. When in reality, you're sharing something that you yourself haven't even completely figured out yet. It's very hard for others to look at a piece of the picture and see the bigger idea, especially when the bigger idea is in your head. So what do you do? Something that I found to work really well is to just not share anything about the song until it's finished. A little extreme, and I've only tried this once, but I did it with my recent single and I found this strategy to work really well. Through the writing sessions and recording sessions, and even when I was alone in my studio coming up with interesting new parts for the song, I chose to keep that excitement that I was feeling between my collaborator Javi and I. The excitement and anticipation and frankly, curiosity of what people were gonna think of my song definitely helped push me to get the song finished. Now, the first time I did share this song with someone, I shared it with a close friend who's very familiar with my work and the music I make. Now, I didn't share this song with this friend until it was kind of too far to turn back. All of the key creative decisions had been made. The song was getting released regardless of my friend's feedback. As for sharing on social media, I started sharing clips and little samples of the song a week before the release as part of my promotion schedule. And at that point, the song was already submitted to TuneCore. It was coming out whether I liked it or not. The other cool thing is when I finally did drop Morning Light, I realized how excited I was to finally be telling people about this song that I had been working on. And I honestly think my energy and excitement around the release is one of the reasons why the song has done as well as it has. But here's the key. This whole process shifted my focus entirely. I was no longer leveraging the thoughts and opinions of others to aid my own creative process. Instead, it forced me to go really, really deep, explore every creative possibility myself with my collaborator. And the goal was simply to tap in as much as we could to our own inner creativity and make this song the best that it could be. Now listen, I completely understand that sharing works in progress has its benefit. It helps us grow a following, build interest around a future release. I mean, the list goes on. I'm not here to tell you, you can't post on social media. That's not what I'm saying. However, if you do choose to share your ideas, I would just really encourage you to finalize for yourself a good chunk of those crucial creative decisions. Have the foundation of your song kind of laid and set in stone. I don't think you should spend a couple of hours coming up with a song idea that you're really excited about, post a little sample to social media still having a lot of questions about where the song is headed. But if you finalize those creative decisions so that no response, good or bad, can change what you've already decided for that song, then I think you're gonna have a much better chance of finishing more songs. Just for a quick little bonus tip, I just really wanna encourage you to create without boundaries. Try to keep yourself from thinking that you can't experiment with new styles and genres and sounds because it's not you or it's not the vibe that you're going for. I used to sit down to write or work on a new song and I would be inspired to create a hip hop track, for example. And I would quickly shut myself off from being open to wherever that creative process would lead me. Telling yourself that something won't work before you've even tried is definitely not the way that you wanna go about your creative process. So many of the skills and techniques that I've learned, especially as a producer, have come from exploring genres outside of, 
I guess, the music that I envision creating for myself. But I think when you sample and pull from a wide sonic variety, it's another one of those practices that really helps you get more in touch with your own unique sound. Well, all right, my friends, that is going to wrap up today's video. Please, in the comments below, definitely let me know if you enjoyed today's video. And of course, share with me any topics that you would like to see covered on this channel in the future. Definitely be sure to check out some of my music. I've also got a playlist right here with some instrumentals and some beat videos. Definitely appreciate you guys checking that out. But listen, my friends, until next time, my name's Patrick. I'll catch you real soon, all right? Peace.